So I'm listening to angels and I was watching this turtle and it was like eating the grass seaweed uh, or the grass seaweed stuff, algae at the bottom. And I'm like, oh my God, I know the only the inside of the turtles too. <laughs> on inside of everything and the reason I say that is when I was growing up I was a little girl we camped a lot so I was the one that found the baby snakes so I was traumatized like five <laughs> but turtles we I remember they were like cutting it open and it had like a bunch of little baby eggs that's why I say the inside is kind of gross but we actually ate it though we put it in our it was called camp slop growing up <clears throat> And um, yesterday, or yeah, last night I was called to do a reading. And sometimes you guys don't get the messages, especially when it's me doing it. So I decided I would read out of the books <clears throat> today. The Silver Pennies, um, Helen Steiner Rice, God's Best for You, and Daily Devotion, or uh, yeah, Daily Guidepost. Because there's, I, there's, I'm being called to, so I know there's messages here that it's for us all. <laughs> So, today is day number 18, the gift of time. How will you use the days of this year and the time God has placed in your hands? Will you waste the minutes and squander the hours, leaving no prints behind in time's sands? Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 1 Corinthians 6.2 How well... How well do you manage your time? Are there extra minutes or hours in your schedule when you could be working for God? Um, and then for silver pennies, I briefly looked at these and they actually do have good messages <clears throat> from the Holy Spirit, from me, above, below, and within, and from the books and other humans that have written them. Fringed gentians or gen gentians have you ever seen fringe gentians they are shy flowers a beautiful blue in color and they fade very quickly if you bring them into the house near where i live there is a lake as blue as blue can be winds make it dance as they go by excuse me messing it up already <laughs> i'm just gonna start over near where i live there is a lake as blue as blue can be winds make it dance as they go blowing by I think it curtsies to, to the sky. It's just a lake of lovely flowers, and my mama says they are ours, but they are not like those we grow to be our very own, you know. We have a splendid garden. There are lots of flowers everywhere, roses and pinks and four o'clocks, and hollyhocks and evening stalks. Mama lets us pick, pick them, <clears throat> but never must we pick any gentians ever. Or if we carry them away, they die of homesickness that day. Aww. And this reminds me of that there's a song uh, Miley Cyrus sings called Flowers. And we'll play that um, when I'm done making my video. But Amy Lowell is who wrote Fringe Gentians. Is a flower. For God's best for you. It's called Nonstop Obedience. Katie was a 10 year old in love with dance. She took lessons twice weekly and she had dreams of becoming a professional ballerina. While her parents encouraged her, they never forced her to continue her lessons. As it happened, they never had to. Yes, sometimes Katie didn't particularly feel like going to class, but she went anyways. She knew if she wanted to reach the top of her chosen profession, she needed years of nonstop training. In a way, God trains us toward obedience to his will and knowledge of his word. On many occasions, we might not particularly feel like following his lead, say, by making an effort to be kind and patient or doing what we know is the God-pleasing thing to do. Yet the more we follow anyway, the more spiritually nimble we become. As nimble people, we're able to stretch further and further, accomplishing God's will with increasing strength, ease, and pleasure. Obedience to God in practical, visible ways takes practice. Skip an opportunity to do His will and you have lost a chance to flex your spiritual muscles. Willfully disobey once and you will find obedience harder the next time. Until having missed so many, missed so many lessons, you no longer even want to obey. 
Your nonstop habitual obedience to God's will keeps you spiritually strong, nimble, and confident. But even if you stumble, do what Katie would do. Get up and start again. It's the way to pro proficiency. It's the way to joy. Devote your heart and soul to seeking the Lord your God. 1 Chronicles 22, 19. I definitely have a lot of <laughs> obedience from God and from man. So I know it to be true. And the story for day number 18, January 18, 2023. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Psalm 29, 2, King James Version. Remember our pastor said as he concluded the sermon, Worship is every bit as important to your spiritual well-being as breathing is to your physical health. While he gave the closing prayer, I checked to see that the music for the postlude was in place and mentally reviewed the introduction to the last hymn. As I played the organ, a familiar feeling of guilt accompanied every note. I had a secret. Although I attended church every Sunday, I didn't worship. I was too busy concentrating on the details of the service. <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope no one remembers I played the same prelude last month. Will the offertory be long enough? Should I slow down on the last verse of the hymn? I enjoyed the Christian fellowship with my friends and neighbors, was inspired and challenged by the sermons. And missing church left a hole in my week, but I didn't worship while I was there. Finally, I confessed my feelings to an older friend who was a professional musician as well as a church organist. Her response was not what I expected. <clears throat> Why do you think it's called the worship service, she asked. Because for many of us, the pastor, the accolades, the musicians, is definitely a time to serve. We worship through our work too, you know. Still, it's important to find times when you're free of responsibility can give your whole heart to worship. Her advice helped me relax and let go of the guilt. I began to seek a few non-traditional opportunities for worship, an evangelism event, musical pre presentations, even occasional TV service. And a strange thing happened. <laughs> Although most Sunday mornings still find me on the Oregon bench, and sometimes every head is bowed and every eye closed except mine, there are plenty of times now when heart worship happens. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for pastors, musicians, ushers, nursery workers, and all who worship through service on Sunday. That, uh, Penny Schwab wrote this in Daily Guide Posts, Devotions for Women. Women can listen too. There is a message there for you too, promise. There's everything I do is non-gender specific, unless I tell you otherwise. But I thought I'd share God's message for you today because sometimes you guys are afraid to come to Tarot World and it's not that scary and <clears throat> I have a huge big story <laughs> and work I did there too but it's okay I started on media and now I'm on youtube.com it's me many moons three tarot llc I may or may not share it seems um there may be supporters and there may not be supporters that's just the way it is in my life some people want to come to the water some don't some believe some don't <sighs> And some don't want to change, some do. So, God bless you. Send my heart to yours. Have a good day.